So to set up the intermediate value theorem, which is uh, what our section 2.8 is, is about, our book uses the idea of a plane, so, and kind of how high a plane is, so what's its altitude. So if, let's say we have a plane, and let's say that it's going to take off, so pretend this is maybe an airport or a runway or something. I guess maybe we'd have some sort of building and uh, I don't know, they got that weird antenna thing, sort of whatever, or something like that. And so we got this plane and our plane, it's a terrible plane, but pretend it's good. Um, so our plane starts down here and it's going to take off. And the altitude of a plane is a plane, you know, begins begin its uh, ascent, starts flying. Oh yeah, that's the great plane. So as it starts flying and uh, going further, it uh, basically it can't skip values. So if say we take off, we go up there to whatever our maximum height is, and then it comes back down and it'll land somewhere else. But the idea is you can't start at zero feet, you know, or yards or whatever you're using to measure, and then suddenly just be up here at like 8,000 feet or something. So it's if you want to get from zero feet to 8,000 feet, you have to pass every single feet in between them. And that's true of continuous functions. So if we have a continuous function and you want to get from some starting point up to some stopping point, you have to hit every single uh, point in between them. And this is sort of the basis of the idea for the intermediate value theorem. If we've seen if you have like say a jump discontinuity, um, so like say down here, this is our functions down here at say negative one, and then it just suddenly jumps to up here at maybe positive one. So we have a graph like this. Here we can go from negative one and we can just immediately jump to positive one and we can skip all the values in between them. So this is an example of a discontinuous function. And so we can't really apply the intermediate value theorem to types like this because these can, uh, these, these types of functions, if it's got a jump discontinuity or a discontinuity anywhere, then there's a possibility of you skipping values in between points and that can cause issues. Um, so like if you're looking for an interval where maybe you had a vertical asymptote and uh, you went from up here and then you picked back up down here. So suddenly you're jumping from huge values down to extremely negative values. And you, uh, over this interval at least, you skipped some of the in-between stuff. So if it's discontinuous uh, due to like infinite discontinuities or jump discontinuities, Intermediate value theorem doesn't apply, but if you are a continuous function, like think of a car's speed maybe, so we could say like a time versus velocity. So let's say you're gonna come from a stop, you're gonna go to freeway speed, then you're gonna pull off the freeway and come back to a stop. So you're at a stop, so you're at zero miles per hour. Say freeway speed's about 70, let's say. So you go from zero miles per hour, you start speeding up. Maybe as you hit the on-ramp, you speed up a lot faster to get up to 70. Then you start slowing down and uh, drive along at 70 for a while. Then you get on the off-ramp and you return back down to zero when you get to the stop, uh, your other stop. So you can see when I get from, as I go from a stop up to 70, I can't just go from zero and then suddenly I'm going 70 miles per hour. It's if I go from zero, I have to go up through, you know, one mile per hour, then two, then three, then 20, then 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way till I get up 70 miles per hour. I can't skip any of the miles per hour in between. And when I stop and I start slowing down, I go from 70 to 60 to 50 to 40, 30, you know, 20, 10, three, two, one. And then I, I basically am not able to skip any, any of the miles per hour. So uh, this is kind of the property we're gonna hit on with the intermediate value theorem is if you have a starting point and a stopping point and you know the function's continuous, then all the to get from the start point to a stop point you have to pass all the points in between and that's kind of the idea that our intermediate value theorem will be based off of